Hey, everybody, welcome back. GPS the God, you know it's a great podcast. When we feel brave enough to take a love story, cut it in half, make you wait an entire week to hear the conclusion, but that's exactly what we did with Mark and Giselli. If you happen to miss part number one, you might want to check that out first before you listen to the conclusion, but who knows, maybe not. Either way, we're glad that you're here. If you've been here before, you know what to do. Rate, review, subscribe. Wherever you listen, wherever you watch, make sure that you rate, review, subscribe. Help us to be visible to more people. You can email us, podcast at parkwaybc.net, podcast at parkwaybc.net. Drop us a line on the old email machine, or you can reach out on Instagram. Send us a message there. You can weigh in on all the topics we have, the guests, the debates, find out how to support us financially, all that cool kind of stuff when you email or drop us a line on Instagram. And since you're already online, you might as well check out Simply Polyco. They help us take care of us on all of our product needs. They can take care of you as well. What kind of products? All of them. That's what they have. They will take care of you no matter your needs. You can find them on Facebook and Instagram, Simply Polyco. You will not be disappointed in them. We made you wait an entire week, but you don't have to wait anymore. We are here. Part number two, you get to hear how God brought Mark and Giselle together. Hope you enjoy this episode. Here we go. So Mm. lots of time, lots of years, lots of miles traveled. You're in China, and this is kind of where your love story, the two of you, starts to come together. Who who wants to take that? Mark, you wanna you wanna give it from your side first? Yeah, I mean I think I think it naturally does if G's in China. Um but I mean basically like I mean I'd I'd moved back and gotten back involved with Parkway and um you know, uh, had been in Russell Monday Sunday school class for a little bit and uh you know, um ended up having another Sunday school class ask if I wanted to help teach their their class and I accepted and so um you know I was teaching a Sunday school class and you know had hadn't really ever been been on a mission before and got approached by by Ralph Hurst um and Ralph said you know just the way that Ralph does you know Mark I think uh I think you and I need to go on a mission trip together. you know and I said yeah that sounds great yeah I'm thinking about Peru you know, so I mean, like, so he was coming up with some, he was mission chairman at the time, so he had a trip going for Peru, a trip going for Brazil. At the time, I was working on a magazine, going great. <laughs> anyway, the, the magazine ended up not getting review, renewed. And they didn't know that at the time, but they, they had kind of broken the deadline, had to let some of the people go, and so I ended up, I was one of their lower editors, and, but so they thought they would retain me, that way they could have some continuity in case they could bring back the old team or build a new one, they'd have some type of continuity. And so I got rolled over to like a real fun job for an introvert, which is the call center for the National Guard. <laughs> oh, my goodness. The agency also owns. So, I mean, just talking to strangers, you know. And, you know yeah, I, I think I'd like to join, but I want to promise that I'm never going to deploy. Not ready. Yeah, you know, not ready. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm 10 months, you know, I mean, we had, we had planned all these beautiful magazines, had all these ideas. All those plans came to nothing. And then I'm sitting here in, in my house doing phone calls, you know, uh, and just, you know, kind of really not happy with that. And, you know, it was during that time that Ralph kind of brought back up, hey, you know, we need to go on a mission trip. And, you know, if I'd been in the middle of, you know, writing features mm-hmm. and doing the travel and all the busyness that is, I would not. I said, I'm sorry, Ralph, but I'm too busy. But you know what? I wasn't. I wasn't too busy. And so uh, I ended up going, uh, training with Ralph to go on a trip down to Porto Alegre, Brazil, where we knew two uh, IMB missionaries, Joel and Tamara, cannot say enough good things about, about Joel and Tamara. Um, but, you know, we, we trained to go down there and, you know, we get um, – we get there, and Joel and Tamara are introducing us to the local church that they're working with, which didn't realize at the time was being led by one of Giselle's old Bible college classmates, <laughs> Pastor Andre. Um, and, um, you know, we're, we're working with them, we're, and, I mean, 
one of the reasons I just love the way that that we did this is that you know we went down there with a team of five people. You know, we had we had Brother Ken, Ralph, and Betty, David Locke, and and myself, least of all. And the thing that was nice about those trips, I mean, not nice, but that was makes them <clears throat> spiritually strong is that there's five people. Mm. So it's not like you you're in a group of twenty. Who's going to give a testimony? Who's going to tell a Bible story? Who's going to do, you know, gospel presentation? It's going to be you. If it's not you this time, it's going to be you next time. And so we were working really close with this local church. And in the process, one of the young ministers there, his name was Alessandro. I didn't know this at the time, obviously, but that was Giselle's brother-in-law. And, uh, you know, we were working real close with them, doing home visits, you know, and just living life with them and, you know, sharing the gospel and, uh, the, and, you know, funny things happen on mission trips. Um, you know, late one night they asked Ralph Hirsch, you know, Joel's like, you know, Ralph, do you like cinnamon? You know, and I mean, the, the context of this is, it is late, you know, like, I mean, we're drained. We've been working since like six o'clock in the morning. It's like 1145. We've just eat, eaten some dessert Brazilian pizza. We're laying up against the wall. And then, you know, Joel just turns to Ralph and, you know, hey, Ralph, you like, do you like cinnamon? And then Ralph, I mean, I'm telling you, just like the most sincere thing I've ever heard anybody ever say. I mean, it was he almost said like a like a marriage vow. He just turned to Joel and was like, "I do." You know, I mean, it's, I mean like that just as an example, you know, like well, all all trip. You know, anybody ask a question to Ralph or answering Ralph, I do. You know, so, you know, funny things happen on mission trips, and uh, one of the funny things that happened with me was that Alessandro's, you know, wife. You know, Giselle's sister, you know, we're working with them, and they just kind of start, everybody kind of starts teasing me. You know, oh, you know, well, Clarissa, you know, has a sister, and you know, she's single, and she speaks English. And, you know, surely y'all are going to come back next year, and she's going to be back on furlough next year. You know, maybe we could get y'all together. And, I mean, I mean, I... It, and I cannot emphasize this enough, and this is something I'm, I'm really serious about, is that I did not, like that was so far from the center of why I was on the mission trip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, so I mean, it was just something that we laughed about. It wasn't something that I even thought about or considered as just something they would joke, oh, Giselle, you see him, you know, kind of talking about it. Um, but later in the trip, I ended up being in a car with Ellison and Clarissa, and neither of whom speak any English. And Clara was in there too, future niece. And right before we were about to get out of the car, we're going to this location, Clarissa just kind of grabbed me and she just kind of stopped me and she just pulled me aside and she just said, Giselle, just pray. Probably about all the new, all the English she knew. <laughs> At the sign, and you know, I'm sitting there thinking, "Well, this is ridiculous." But I kind of also just stop myself for a second. And it's like, "Look, you can do this." Like, I mean, they, she's just asked you, just pray. It's a mm -hmm. simple request. Mm -hmm. You know, you're here. You can just do it. You don't have to. It doesn't have to go any further than that. So I stopped. You know, took a little five minute walk, and was just like, "Lord." You know that I'm not looking for a girlfriend. Because I didn't think I was going to have a girlfriend. I wasn't looking for a girlfriend. Like, not looking for a girlfriend. I'm not looking for a girlfriend from Brazil. I'm not looking for a girlfriend from Brazil and China. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if it's your will, you show me. And if you show me, I'll do. You know, it was just as simple as that. And I thought that that was, like, going to be the end that God would speak on. The, the silence that followed would be what God spoke about Giselle, which fortunately ended up not being the case. So after we, we got back from the trip, you know, I, uh, you know, we were going to contact Giselle, like just functionally as a team. We were like, hey, you know, she's going to be here next year. We need translators. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll just, we'll just reach out. And she ended up sending me, you know, just a friend, friend request to say, hey, you know, no, you met my family. You know, y'all did some mission work. Thank you. You know, and we're like, oh, yeah, we're looking forward to, you know, going back next year. We'll get to see you. So we just kind of started 
talking, you know, and pretty soon on Zoom before Zoom was cool. Um, <laughs> but that was when we just, um, and that was November 2017. And that was um, just a period of time where we had, we, we began our friendship. Because really that's what it was in the beginning, was a friendship. Um, but so that's my side. I have a question. What What did your family tell you? After they met Mark and peer pressured him into yeah. praying, so in what, the what, what did they tell you afterward? Like during all that happening, I was in China, working, and at that time, that that I, I have to share this because all girls out there <laughs> they're praying. <laughs> um, I was in China. My team was very small and. We were four ladies, uh, and three of uh, three of these four ladies were in their late fifties uh, and six and early sixties, single in wow. China, and two of them have been working in China for over uh, twenty years, uh, and I was there, and and we worked. I'll just mention this: we worked. Uh, with a matri- ma- matriarchal, matriarchal uh, um, people, uh, and and they had kind of a walking marriage, and the girls didn't have their husbands. They didn't get married. They was walking. They came visit, and then the uncles raised the children. So in in uh. our team didn't we didn't have that uh, family example as missionaries, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I I prayed. I said, uh, God, uh, if it's your will for me to be here for over 20 years single, I accept your will. But I want to leave, be content, and uh, and you know what you're doing if that's your will. And I just gave it to the Lord because it's hard to to live in a different like far away. And I was in my early. 30s already (laughs) um and and then i gave it to the lord and and i i've been i had been praying all my life since i met jesus for my for my family for my husband i was praying for him not knowing that it was him um and they started Sending me messages. Oh, this is Mark. <laughs> Pictures. He, he's a good guy. Like the team respect him. He's the man of God. Oh, this and this. My pastor, his wife, my sister, my brother in law keep sending these messages. And I'm like, hey, I, I, I'm, I just talked with the Lord. I'm done. I'm good. And, and just, and, and, of course, my team and this kind of thing we we share just for fun and and also like we like we have supervisors, people that like uh, we 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 try to be accountable of those things and and they saw mark's picture pictures and mm. <laughs> <laughs> And one of my friends from the Philippines, she said, oh, gee, I, I don't know. We, we can't access Facebook in China. Only if we have, uh, 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 what is it, what do you call it? The protected, I forget mm-hmm. now. Like encrypted. Yeah. Like a, like a VPN kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. VPN. Okay. Um, and, uh, and she said, oh, gee, come on, just let's check on him on Facebook. And, <laughs> And I'm like, no way! I, I, I don't need that. So, and and then, uh, and then, uh, she insisted. I said, oh, okay. I prayed, oh, Lord. <laughs> and and so then I sent this message. Hey, this is just Sally. I'm here. To tell you went met my people. Uh, how how did the mis- like no intention really they they were all with this com- this campaign of, uh, talking about each other but it, a campaign that's a good word <laughs> that's a like good that. word yeah. <laughs> yeah and and we we are both eighty fives it's a good year yeah and, like lots of things in our lives happen simultaneously. <laughs> 
Um, well, we're telling the story, nice. your, your story, from two different worlds, really, and how God worked in both of your lives and brought you together through many different things in, in each of your lives that it's not coincidence that he had a plan mm-hmm. to bring. And, and it's great that we can laugh about it and have fun with it, but none of us could have planned what has happened yeah. to bring you two together, which yeah. is why we're here telling your story. So yeah. When God <laughs> called me to China, it took 10 years of training, 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 preparing. It was a long road and, and like, the fact that I started studying English early and then go to China. And when I went to China, I was going to stay long term. It wasn't to go back after two years. Uh, and and now we are here together as a family. <laughs> and we both love the Lord. And now we have our daughter. And it's like, what is next? We are waiting where God is going to lead us. Because uh, if God took me through all this and to get to China and then to meet Mark, and now I'm here in America, what what's next? You, know? <laughs> you all talk just as friends. What kind of happens to bring you all? You've already spoiled the surprise. Like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. They, they get <laughs> married. If you, didn't, if you didn't guess, they get married. I think married. they probably piece that together. What? They have I a think beautiful they daughter. Yeah. But yes. Yes, they do. How did, how did it all kind of finally come together um, a, after those first initial Zoom meetings? Well, uh, you know, I mean, it, it started with correspondence. And so a lot of it was email. Um she, you know, would be traveling to the to a village, you know, and then she would write back, you know, things that had happened. And I mean, a lot of things were were really interesting, you know, some of the things that she was doing. And it's like, uh, and meanwhile, I'm working in the call center, and so if you're not taking a call or a chat, I mean, you have time to write emails. So I was able. So I mean, God created that time, and so uh, the conversations we were having were really deep really fast because we were just you know just sharing who we were and right and getting more and more like wow like this girl's incredible and like not and it's just like man i'm like really glad she's my friend it's like it's mm-hmm. just awesome to know her for example I mean, one day she's going out she's like oh i gotta get out of here pretty quick you know i'm, I'm i want to make sure i leave on time because they're going we're going to the village, and they're going to kill this pig, and I want to see it. And I'm like, man. Exciting stuff like, right here. Like, this, this girl is cool. <laughs> she, missed, <laughs> she missed the jungles of Brazil. That's yeah. what it was. Like, you, don't, you don't hear a lot of, at least in America, you don't hear a lot of women say that. You know, I was like, that's just cool. But, you know, I mean, she was, she was just sharing so much about what the Lord was doing uh, in her life. And, you know, we kind of – we. I mean, it just kind of naturally became more intimate and more close. And within a period of two months, right as we kind of approached that new year, I was thinking, if God created, I mean, the best way I could just say it is, you know, I think there are t- times in your life, and this was one of them for me, where everything is white. Like everything is clear. And like that, I don't know, like that January, it was like God had just made like made everything clean. Like everything clear. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we've been on deployments. And you want to be really careful. This is not a type of thing that you want to play around with. Somebody that's far away, that's isolated. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you can kind of look at it. And when, when somebody's far away, everything get, kind of goes two strange directions. It's either a telescope um, where everything seems really, really far away. Um, or... It's like a microscope, like the smallest little interaction, the smallest little sigh on the phone when you talk mm-hmm. to somebody. You're thinking about that. You don't have a lot of other interactions to think about, so you dwell with that stuff. And so I, as I was kind of coming to the realization, like, you know, wow, like I'm, I think I'm falling for this girl. It's like, well, it's not one of those things, well, let's date and figure it out, <laughs> you know, because that's not the way that you enter that space. And from deployments, I knew that. Like, you need to be very careful and very certain. And so that um, that uh, New Year's, I prayed to the Lord asking for for a sign. Like, if, you know, you 
if you want to make me to do this, and I feel that I am, but I want to ask you, Lord, if um, send me a sign. And he ended up sending me two. The first was, I mean, we, G and I just were kind of opened up about how we were starting to feel. And, and she told me the story about her prayer, you know, and about, mm-hmm. and she had said the thing, I'll never forget it. She said, I, you know, with what we were, what was going on, she says, I remember my, my prayer from before, from now. And like, mm-hmm. she could see how God had done that. And that was powerful to me, but it wasn't a whole answer because she's the other person. Other part of the equation. The other part of the yeah. equation. Right. So that doesn't feel like an outside answer. It felt like half. So I mean, I, so it's like a flip the fleece. You know, and it's like, you know, let's do the do the other way. <laughs> um, but I took a, because I was serious, I took a week off work. And I went back to spend a week with my sister. And I was just kind of, you know, I, I'm, I'm an introverted person. I don't open up about a lot of stuff. So I'm just telling Lindy all the stuff. And as I'm telling her this, she's just laughing, of course. You know, and, <laughs> and but she's like, but she, then she starts crying. And a little bit later, um, we would kind of sat down. And she said, there's something I want to tell you. And she's like, nobody else knows this. She said, you know, I know that since you've come back home, like you're happy. Like, you know, you're you're around the family. You're in the church. Like you're in your Sunday school class. And she's like, all these things are good. She's like, but I just felt like before you went on your trip that I needed to pray that you would meet somebody. And she's like, and you did in a miraculous way. And that was, that was my answer. Wow. And um, so, I mean, I ended up, a couple of weeks went by telling my parents, you know, and then we, they, they ended up meeting her, you know, online. And I was certain, you know, I mean, um, my dad said I was sitting at a table, you know, and said, well, I mean, we're just kind of sitting there. And I'm like, I just, I don't know. I, mean, I don't think I can live without her. You know, I'm crazy about her. Uh, so she asked if I wanted to, if I would come to, to China. And so to just to visit, you know, so we could meet in person. And, you know, I got my Chinese visa. But he, first he said no. We weren't supposed to talk about that. That, that, was, that was when we were friends. That was, that was before. That was before. She's like, like she was, no like, way. She no. was, you know, kind of fishing. You know, you ever interested in China? Not really. You know, but then, then, then afterwards, you know, she, she's, we were, after we'd kind of, we began dating, she was like, would you come to China? And I said, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, but anyway, so anyway, I ended up getting the ticket and I mean, I knew, I knew, um, because the Lord had confirmed it. I mean, I don't, after the Lord confirms it, I don't need another confirmation. And so I, some people might think this radical, but, and perhaps it is, but, you know, I went and got an engagement ring and I'm like, I'm going to China with this engagement ring. Like, I mean, and you know, it, in some ways, you know, G and I had never met, but I tell you, you know, like we knew each other, like we knew each other <laughs> on a deep level that, you know, if we hadn't been able to have that correspondence we could have met each other and not known each other as well. We could talk because when I was starting my day, after my classes in the morning, he was finishing his day. So he had, he had the, mm-hmm. the night time, uh, like the evening hours, and I had that afternoon hour. That, that. So we talked, we, and we exchanged emails when we could. And so that, that gave us all this. There's knowing each other more. Yeah, by this point, we're talking, you know, two or three hour, sometimes four hour conversations, sometimes twice a day. You know, kind the, of the serious of ones, day. like yeah. the important ones, were, went long. And, you know, I mean, it, the way that we came together, we like to, we put this in our visa packet, but it's true. It's like, you know, our our story is really both kind of an old world you know, like the people that you know that you don't know this other person, but they kind of connect you. It's a, kind of an old world type of connection. But then we got to know each other one on one and with new world technology. So it's kind of this strange mm-hmm. blend of the old and the new. And I, I'll tell you, I mean, the Lord is so good. This is beyond, you know, what I ever deserved. But one of 
the the great experiences of my life was you know after we you know go into the airport and you have a engagement ring and you know you know you're going to to meet this this beautiful Brazilian and like a foreign land and you're going to ask her to marry you like I mean not a lot of people in their life get to feel that exhilaration and I mean just even like the way that the, the thing flew you know I come think I'm oh they're going to send me to L A and then I'm going to fly to Japan and China. No, they, they they sent me to Washington D.C. and then we cut across the Arctic Circle, oh, wow. you know, mm. and then and then you know kind of get routed that way. And so it's like wow. here you are, you know, in the airport with a ring, about to leap the Arctic Circle <laughs> to go like ask a girl to marry you in a foreign land. I mean, it's just like this, like you know, I don't write this stuff for myself. I mean, it just it's just like God's so good and mysterious, and um, but I mean, it was. It was interesting. We ended up meeting at the airport uh, in East Asia, and um, you know that was a that was an incredible experience. Yeah, it was late. It was three a.m. Three in the morning. <laughs> no dark thirty. Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, it was delayed. Yeah. So did you did you propose on this first meeting? Or? No, no. I I, I knew that I was going. to gonna propose to her on the third day because the third day was her birthday um and um you know it, it was really hard on that second day we were having like a romantic dinner at like one of these you know restaurants and there was like nobody else sitting upstairs so we were just up there and they got all this beautiful music playing and it was like we're having the best day and i had that ring in my pocket you know, and like perfect timing, but perfect timing. I, I'll tell you, you know, we, we were also there with one of uh, uh, G's teammates, and and she's like, you know, you oh, you know, we got to be careful when we get on this train. You know, there's a lot of pickpockets, and, oh, all this no, stuff, no. and you know, people steal bags, and so I mean, I'm taking like you know extra like all these precautions. Like I'm trying to sleep with my bag, and the guy comes over, he's like, no, you have to put your bag down there. You know? And so you know, then I'm. Putting it, taking, trying to take it out without G seeing, you know, it's, it's like a movie because you're in that kind of public kind of train, but you're all sleeping in these bunks. And so I'm taking the ring, putting it in the thing. Oh, I'll just roll this jacket up and put it behind my head, you know. And, I mean, just ridiculous, ridiculous scenarios. Um, but, you know, going into that trip, G had said to me, you know, she said, I think it's time for us to be together. And so, when I ended up proposing on her birthday, that was what I what I said to her. You know, was that I think it's time to be together, and I want to start right now. So. Gee, did you have any idea that it was going to happen on this no. on this trip? No, because he hadn't. We were not with my family together. Like he he hadn't met my mom yet in okay. person. Though he he he's, he met my sister and my brother-in-law, but not my mom. Okay. And my mom was the authority. <laughs> <laughs> I had so I I had no idea, and, okay. and my because uh, in American culture, I, I also is different. Right. You know? And my uh, this lady, my teammate, is American, and um, and she's like, gee. Oh, it could happen. I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> I was very like, no. It's, and yeah, I was just a very, I was really waiting for the Lord and I was, I didn't have expectations and I just, I wanted to meet him. We, we loved each other and it's like, and I was going to Brazil and it, it, it was complicated because I was going on furlough back in Brazil, and he would be in America, and it's like all these three countries, uh, like all the time. Yeah. So you you propose, you go over, you propose, you leave again. How how long was this trip? I mean, it was. I don't remember. Okay, it was like ten, eleven days. But I mean, you know, like we were talking about before, Two I mean, days. you're doing about forty hours of travel. So I mean, we think we were there for about eight. Yeah, days mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. So, so you come back home. How long are you in China after that? That was May. I left in August to, mm-hmm. to go back to Brazil. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
how how does it you obviously live in america now how long did it take how, what was the process for you all getting married getting in, in coming to america yeah i got two visa denials uh tourist, visa. tourist visas because because of my background like going to asia and mm. Not having a job. Or it was a Matthew. It was a Matthew five, you know, ten through twelve problem, because all of the strikes against her were from her mission work. Mm. You know, you know, they look at you. You know, are you? you know, do you have a job? You know, where you get regular income? It's like, well, no, I mean, because <laughs> she's a missionary. You know, it's like, well, you know, but you, but you have a place, you know, that you have to come back. You have a property or rent. No, I live with my mom because, oh, well, so you do also another flight risk. It's like, oh, you've been hopping all these different countries. Well, I mean, that's my, well, and so like, I mean, outside of the context, it just, it had all the wrong flags. Yeah. Um, and I mean, but it wasn't, but it was, so it ended up being kind of like a very difficult bureaucratic problem as a result of the faithfulness of, of her life. And so, I mean, it was, you know, that you got denied in September, 2018. Mm -hmm. And we had another trip that had come down okay. during that time period, um, a mission trip. And I just stayed an additional week afterwards. Um, so that way we wouldn't be, you know, tempted to kind of mix the, the, the family mm -hmm. stuff, meeting everybody at the same, there, there would just kind of be, separated and so that way we we were able to we'd do the mission together she was my translator yeah. uh down there which is that's brutal <laughs> and um and then but afterwards you know we got to, to uh, spend time with your family yeah and uh, the second time i applied with my mom and my mom got visa and i did <laughs> oh, wow. wow yeah yeah and yeah, but that was uh, then after this visa, we applied for fiance visa, and mm -hmm. it it was about eight months wow. after that. So it was a year and a one it, year and a half. And I mean, God provided for us in that way. I mean, we were looking for lawyers. I'd gone to about two or three different places looking for the right place. Hadn't found a place that I really felt good about. And then I think it was Joanne Armour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was that episode fifteen? She's on. That's a good episode too. <laughs> um, but Joanne Armour, you know. Uh, said, hey, you know, there's one of our neighbors. He just married. He's a lawyer, and he just went through this exact same thing, and he married a Peruvian mm -hmm. girl. And, you know, you might ask him. And so we asked him, and he became our lawyer, and he was, <laughs> I mean, yeah. just an absolute godsend because everything that we were going through, yeah. he had gone through, not just in the bureaucratic yeah. level, but on the emotional yeah. level. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, that was perfect. Uh, I mean, our visa packet ended up being over 200 pages. Wow. A lot. Uh, I mean, people say, oh, you should write your love story. It's like, we did. We did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, we, we did. Um, but, I mean, it was, uh, and, and this church here and the church in Brazil um, was, uh, was so big and I always will appreciate what brother Ken. I mean, brother Ken. you know, sometimes mm -hmm. these things, you know, you pray for them once and then every, I mean, in the life of a church, there's a lot of things that go on for a long time and things that jump up each week. But brother Ken, I mean, it meant so much that he always remembered because for me, I mean, it was, well, if this visa doesn't go through, I mean, that's it. I'm just moving to Brazil. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, you know, fortunately when we went to, went down to Rio for your interview at the, the consulate and hmm. was that August of 2019? Yeah. Yeah. July, August 19. Yeah. And then I came that month. In, yeah. I came in, in August, 2019 and, and we had uh, 90 days, 90 days, three months to prepare a wedding. <laughs> And Lana, Mark's mom, helped me. Like, I didn't know what, I didn't know anything. I didn't know what was Hobby Lobby or <laughs> all this. And, yeah, and I was just going with the flow. Or, and in the end, it was cute. But your wedding. mom was able to come. Yeah, my mom. Awesome. My mom was the only family that came. And, and, and Joel and Tamara 
and Lindell and Paul, my, she she was my mentor in, in Bible uh, college, and only s- five people came from mm-hmm. Brazil, and yeah, and you know what happened after yeah. that? Yeah, my mom. That was the last time I saw my mom in yeah. person, and then the, the year after that, she last year she passed away. Yeah. It's too hard. It's yeah. still hard to believe. And, you know, I mean, it was one of the things that was hard was, you know, during that time with the visa, you know, we that time of separation was was really hard. You know, I mean, long-distance relationship, you know, on steroids. And, you know, you don't know how the, the end is going to – you're mm-hmm. going to have to move here, you're going to have to move there. Like, what's that going to look like with me moving to Brazil not speaking Portuguese yet? you know, as a possibility. Um, But G and I talked a lot while she was in Brazil, like God has you here, like in in the now for a reason. And we don't know what that is, but we know that there's a reason. And, you know, you know, considering our prayer from before, from now, like we know that the Lord has set that time for G to be able to be with her mom. Mm -hmm. You know, and otherwise it's like she if everything had just been all green lights and she'd been able to sprint away, you know, we, after spending two years in China, she wouldn't have had to get, got to spend a year with her mom. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that ended up, what we thought was like a really hard thing ended up being a, a blessing. Yeah. How was y'all's, like, y'all's spiritual walk during those? I mean, having two visas denied and being separated, did that bring you closer God, or I'm sure that was disappointment there. How was that time spiritually? For, for me, you know, the I mean, I the Lord has spoken, you know, mm-hmm. already. Like, I, I mean, I, I didn't have any question. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the how can always change, mm-hmm. but the, the what and the why were firm. And so for me, it was just a, a clear set of, of choices. Like, you know, it could be that we go through this and we don't get it. Well, then the Lord wants us in Brazil, mm-hmm. you know, or somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, may he do as seem good, seems good to him. Um, but, I mean, it is hard. It's really hard. And Yeah, Mark was more like, oh, we'll be okay. And I'm like... This is not happening. <laughs> this visa is weird. It's so hard. And yeah, my side, I was like, I, Mark was like, it's okay. We'll, we're walking. We'll get this visa. And I'm like, I, I was in the stress of coming back too. And, and, and it was busy, uh, visiting churches and sharing things. And, and, yeah, it, it, but we shared a lot and we prayed a lot too, mm-hmm. and, and that sustained us. And mm-hmm. being, we were very busy too. But Mark was the steady. It's okay, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> well, it's I mean, not it was, going. To- <laughs> it was. It, it's tough, you know. I mean, and you know, a lot of people for a lot of good reasons want to move to America, and you know, and a lot of them, a lot of people have that dream. You know, and for some of them, it's to pursue a better life, you know, in in certain cases. But what was just ironic about G's situation was G didn't want to live in America. Like, I mean, like in and of itself, she wanted us to be together and to be a family. But, you know, she liked England better than America. She liked Brazil better than America. She liked, you know, Asia better than America. And then, like, now she's having to apply and, you know... They're doing criminal records, you know, and all of them, and, you know, clean slate everywhere, and she's getting rejected, you know? She's like, I don't even want to go to this country, and I'm getting rejected, you know, which is, you know, just kind of this, this creates this, uh, this emotional tumult, you know, that you kind of wouldn't, wouldn't expect. And so, I mean, it, I mean it, was a, it was a hard situation, you know, because also I was able to see more of the things that are in control, like we're creating the documents that was happening mm. here. And so I was able to see things and, you know, I could, I'm, I'm the one that could go call the lawyer, go talk to the lawyer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I've had more touch points with like what we're going to do 
the male, you know, the, the problem solving kind of thing. Yeah. And she was, you know, just having to take my word on a lot of different things. And so, I mean, that was a lot harder for her than it was for me. Just seeing the way that just God orchestrated everything. I know going through things is, is difficult and we might not see it, but just stepping back and just hearing y'all talk about it from little things like you failing the test, you and the magazine going through that allowed you to go on the, the trip, your sister praying. I mean, just seeing God just work through situations and looking back on that is just, it's just amazing. Just, it's almost like he doesn't want us to be able to tell our story without telling his story. Right. Yeah. And I don't think you can. No, no, we can't. No. It doesn't make sense. No. Yeah. Outside of it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for telling your story, sharing with everyone. Um, it is amazing. I mean, there's no other word to describe it. Amazing. Uh, we already said there's no one here could have orchestrated and planned everything that happened to the no. two of you to bring you together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're glad that God did that. We're glad that you were able to share that story um, with, with everyone else. So, Ryan, you good? I'm good. I'm, <laughs> I'm along for the ride on this one. This has been amazing. And Speechless. It's good I'll, stuff. I'll tell you this. I know because I'm, I'm a listener. I haven't listened to them all, but I think I'm at 75%. <laughs> I, I think I got about eight I, left. It's all right. It's all right. Um, but the, uh, we know y'all finish on a verse. I'm going to get a little bit mm-hmm. in trouble here. Um, because I told, you know, she, she, she asked me not to do this, but she has no, a good go verse. Ahead. You go um, ahead. Enough said. Enough said. She always uses. And so I'm going to read it if, if you don't mind. No, go right ahead. Uh, but, but I want, but I want to make a note of what the point of origin is. She, we're in, we're in Fano's Sunday school class and Fano's already seen me get in trouble. Like I have, before. I have. Uh-huh. I mean, twice does that make it a habit? <laughs> um, but, but this is a this is a verse um, that's always been close to G, and she shared it with me multiple times. Um, and so I just uh, wanted to to read this because this is part of part of her story, part of our story, and most of all, it's part of God's story. Uh, how then will? And by the way, excuse me. This is Romans ten. Uh, 14 through 15. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? How are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Well, again, thank you very much for coming. It's a great story. There is more to tell, I'm sure, but this is this will be our longest episode. So you you have that feather in your cap right there. You can tell people. It sounds like many it, feathers. Well, e- <laughs> even though G is, uh, she thought we were almost to 20 episodes or something. We she, she's got a little catching up to do. Will, but, yeah. yeah, start with this one and work your way back. There you go. There you go. But one thing we touched on last episode, I forgot to say it at the beginning, was we. With Adam here last week talking about giving money, and it was brought to my attention. Some people may want to give anonymously, and you don't want to um, necessarily email in and get some information. So if you would like to do that, go to parkwaybc.net, and there's a tab there for online giving, and you will see uh, you can give to the podcast through that if that's something you would like to do. But if you would like to give anonymously to Adam and to um, his foundation that they are starting, you can email podcast at parkwaybc.net, and uh, I, I will get those emails and will help you stay anonymous as that money gets sent to Adam. So I forgot to say that at the beginning. but. Mark G, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Thank you for yes, sharing thank your you story. So thank you all. Appreciate you guys. Thank you Great. all for listening. We love you. God loves you more. And we will see you again next week on GPS to God. Thanks for listening to GPS to God. Make sure you leave a rating or review on whichever app you happen to use. Also find us on YouTube and be sure to subscribe to our channel.